Hey, thanks for watching another live stream broadcast brought to you by, well, us, Eastwood and Paint Education. And uh, I just want to say it's an honor and a privilege to be able to do these broadcasts in conjunction with the Eastwood Company. Both of our agendas is to share information, is to get product information out there and create the situation to where if you're using this stuff for a first time, your first time out, you have success with it. So, um, and possibly if you're a veteran, if you're a hobby guy that's got some some uh, experience under his belt, maybe we can also empower you and show you some new tips and tricks, which we're going to be showing you a bunch of stuff. Today's live stream, we're talking about fillers, Bondo, aka polyester surface enhancement material. Um, there's a ton of them. We get questions all the time on the online restoration forums, as well as uh, in different ways. People come up to me at shows, and people come to the Eastwood showrooms, and they say, what should I use, and where should I use it? I've got three different circumstances. There's 15 different types of fillers. We're going to walk you through a lot of it. Real quick, we've got flexible fillers. We've got uh, short strand fiberglass fillers. There is a aluminum filled filler, your standard body fillers, and glazing putties. And what I consider to all still be a filler because it's still part of the shaping and contouring process is polyester uh, high build filler. It's a wonderful product and it's your last chance to really enhance that surface. So we're going to be talking about it, not spraying it today, but talking about its importance. As well as, you know, there's different catalysts for different things and you've got to keep that stuff straight. So why why did I have my filler on the shaker? <laughs> okay, I had it on the shaker because of this. Check this out. Ken dive deep. Camera guy Ken is an awesome videographer. Can you see that in there? This is resin technology. That stuff floats to the top. This is not anything bad about the product. It's it's the nature of the beast. The resins separate. This stuff might sit on a shelf for a while, and it might sit, you know, in a UPS truck for a while. This stuff separates. So that particular shaker doesn't agitate to where it's going to aerate. By aerate, I mean add bubbles. It agitates where it will actually shake the bubbles out, and it will intermix your, uh, your, your uh, resins that are going to float to the top, brain fart, <laughs> and, uh, and, and get it ready for you to to uh, apply. So anyway, we're also going to be talking about different methods of blocking, different blocks, and my three recommended grits of sandpaper for shaping, 36, 80, and 180. And we're going to walk you through circumstances where you might need a different type of filler. For instance, this sail panel here is a factory leaded seam. We're going to talk to you about what to put in there to properly mimic without having to fuss and muss with the lead. And uh, walk you through a dent demo. This is just an old Ford Ranger fender, and I've dollied out a dent right here, and we're going to walk you through the process of that, as well as different sandpapers. And great ways, tips and tricks on how to master the technique of body filler. It's not all about how, it's about what more. But um, I wanted to talk about filler. In the mid-50s, uh, leading up until the mid-50s, leading seams was, was standard automotive repair. And it, it takes a real craftsman, guys like Gene Winfield, uh, that, are, that are still um, craftsmen when it comes to leaded seams. And, and uh, it's, it's a real interesting uh, art form. I call it an art form because uh, you can do so much with it. In the mid-50s, polyester fillers, which is basically plastic, took the place of lead and kind of took the industry over. And just because of the way technologies grow and morph uh, and the way people have the tendency to use the old technology techniques on the new technology. And this transfers through paint as well. So Bondo, which is a brand name, filler, polyester filler, got a bad name. And it's just it's one of those things that it hasn't really shaken. And you can, you can do this. It's a lifetime repair if you do it properly. But if you abuse it, well, uh, yes, you can have a failed uh, filler. For instance, here, right here. That, if you grind that down and fill that in, you're going to have a half inch of body filler there. Not good. Call the plastic abuse hotline. That's not how to use body filler. You're not making soap sculpture here. It's not like lead where you, it doesn't tolerate the massive thicknesses because it will shrink and it'll crack and it'll separate and delaminate and all that kind of stuff. Moreover, than, than using it as a particular filler, you want to use it as a surfacer. And by a surfacer, I mean don't fill holes like that in. 
fill minor imperfections like that in. So change your philosophy on what you think Bondo is all about. Now, the circumstance where you'd need a polyflex, something like this, is if you're on, on a very flimsy uh, urethane bumper cover and you know that it's going to be flexed, either reinstalling it on the car or that it flexes on the car. Now, that's a nice filler when it comes to that circumstances. But if you put that on and you don't put a flex agent in your, surf your primer surfaces on top of that, you may end up still with a cracking issue. The Contour Short Strand Body Filler is very nice. It's just that. It's short strand fiberglass impregnated filler. It's a great product, if, particularly if you're working on fiberglass and you want to crispen up edges and, and gap your panels and things like that. I use it all over on Jaded. It's a nice product. Now, I've learned that this is not necessarily the thing to use on a sail panel, like on our, on our Z sled. Uh, I used to put it on the, the sail panels and the transitions. That's a major flex point. But and so it's not necessarily the best filler to use. I've gotten away with it, it's not a mistake, but I've learned more and I've learned that the aluminum filled compound is actually the best filler to use in this particular instance. Let's go over to the car can and I will show you what I'm talking about. We've got Z sled here. What, and by the way, this is a spider. Go away, go. Okay, <laughs> I don't wanna make it a rain. Sorry. Um, <laughs> this is going to be a, a project that, uh, that we're going to walk you through, and we're going to do a budget pro touring version of this car. It's a 78 Camaro. I'm crazy about this car just because it's such a POS. But anyway, um, right here, it's a leaded seam. Even in 1978, they had leaded seams. This is between the quarter panel and the roof skin. Now, right here, I've melted it out. I've melted the lead out and wire brushed it down. So the reason I did that is because, well, look a little further here. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> That's awful. That is awful. This is a major structural weakness in the design. It's a design flaw in this car. Sorry, guys. Sorry, GM designer guy that designed this car. It is. They flex like crazy. And this is not even a T-top car. And it's stress cracked over the years on both sides, and it allowed some corrosion in. So that's the reason I'm putting a roof skin on this car. And at some point, we're going to show you guys how to do it. Uh, so keep on watching for different Eastwood Media outlets. Um, a uh, little cool, crazy thing we're going to do called hands-on cars as well. But right here, we have to replace this filler once I put my skin on. So that is where the contour aluminum-filled compound comes in. This can be a replacement for lead. The reason being is that it's st it stays flexible. So this is a major flex point, like we said on this car. And this will allow us to properly surface that back down, fill it in as much as it needs to be filled, and come back, and, and on top of being flexible, it's a little bit waterproof as well. So that's going to effectively replace the lead on there. So that's the circumstance that, you, that you'd use that. For the fiberglass short strand, like I said, fiberglass, if you're u doing a non-flexible structural repair and you want a waterproof seal, the fiberglass short strand is a beautiful product for that. We've already talked about the, the contour premium filler comes in different sizes along with the catalyst. Once you're done shaping with your premium, then you come back with a glazing putty. Or if you've got small like whiskey nicks on the side of a door, um, you can use the glazing putty as your filler. Here's a cool thing too, it comes in a, in a convenient small uh, or amount or volume here and with its own catalyst as well. The beauty of this, unlike this, it, can you? Yes. Should you? No. This you can wipe it over top of a of a prepped painted surface and you can get away with it. That's what it's formulated for. It's a very fine talc. It's what wipes smoothly and uh, it's a great product for not only finishing off this, but if you've got small minor repairs, then you can wipe over top with a contour, blend your repair into the surface and really, really crispen it up and make sure the contour and the crown is correct. Polyester primer surfacer. I cannot say enough about this. I was talking to somebody at a Media Blasters the other day about back in the day in the 80s when everybody used to use Feather Fill. Feather Fill was a great pro uh, product, but brutal, horrible to use. Polyester surfacers have come so far since Feather Fill. And Feather Fill is still out there, but man alive, it's been reformulated a bunch of different times. And it's, still, it's, it's grown and evolved as its own product as well. But I really like the contour because it, uh, 
it, it powders nicely, it's easy to apply, the viscosity is not an issue, and, uh, and it doesn't ever shrink. It doesn't ever shrink. It'll tolerate massive film thickness. And the truth is, it's the last opportunity that you're going to have to really straighten out your body panel. So this, to me, has become my last stage of body work. There's, there's a dividing line between uh, shaping and prepping. The shaping is using fillers. That's getting your surface up. And that's what, that's what polyester surface or and filler is, is about. You're shaping from about 220 grit forward up until 2,000, 3,000, 4,000 grit. Well, then you're prepping, or you're prepping from the top down to buff. But that's your dividing line. So two, uh, 220 grit and up, we're not talking about filling anymore. That work should have already been done. So keep that in mind when you're figuring out what, what type of sandpaper to use. Speaking of sandpaper, here's what I recommend to block filler. We've got 36, we've got 80 grit, and we've got 180. You can fine tune, you can pick and choose, you can use 60, you can use 120, it doesn't, whatever's available. 40, not much difference between 36 and 40, but to me, 36, I want to go to town, I want to get it done, I want to get my shape established. So I like to use a very aggressive 36, uh, and then follow that with 80, and then follow that with 180, and then I'm ready for primer surfacer or contour poly. So there's all kinds of great equipment that you can get to block with. There's these dura blocks, different shapes. The soft sanders, which I've become particularly fond of with all the different shapes, uh, contours, these are all already mapped off of existing vehicles, so you can match your shapes up to, to different areas. It's a nice product to use. And then you can make your own. You can use radiator hoses. You can use uh, paint stir sticks. You can use all kinds of stuff to, to create your sanding blocks. Um, so let's, uh, let's fix a dent, shall we? OK. Right here, what I've done is I've hammer and dollied my, my, my damage out, and, and I'm reasonably happy with that. How do I know that it's flat? Well, I can run my hand off it. It feels a little bit lumpy. But, and Ken, I don't know if you can shoot up with this or, or shoot down on it, but basically what I do is I'll get a straight edge, and I'll run that straight edge down, and I'll look. And if I see daylight under there, or if it's rocking, then I know that I need to hammer and dolly a little bit more. So a straight edge like this, even a wooden paint stir stick or something, will help guide you and let you know exactly where your panel sits and if you're ready for filler or not. So that's just half a straight edge around. It'll, it'll, it'll give you a little more confidence when you're applying filler, because the last thing you want is to block down through and have to pound an egg down and, uh, and change the whole structure of your repair. So we're ready for there. Also, want you to note that I'm prepped around it. I've prepped with 36 into 80, and I've prepped around it. Jackie Carter showed me that technique a long time ago. Carter, if you're watching, thank you. Um, basically, what it allows you to do is you, don't, you, you can wipe past your repair. And when you get to your stage of your contour glazing putty, you can wipe past it, and you can get a good bond and feather that into the existing repair and create the illusion that it was never damaged in the first place. So I always prep around a dent when I'm dealing with a painted surface that I'm just doing a spot uh, repair on and not blasting the whole panel. So let's talk about some necessities here. Quick sheets are good. <laughs> we like quick sheets. They are good. What these do is allow us to uh, have a clean slate. I'm not walking around looking for chunks of cardboard. I just peel the sheet off when I'm done, and I move on to the next sheet. Uh, if I need to mix more than is going to fit on, on the quick sheet, then um, I'm probably going to mix it onto the roof of the vehicle or something like that. So, so we don't, this is a nice size. It's, it's really good. Gloves, why am I wearing gloves? Well, because I don't want to wear the filler off of my fingers. Also, it will wick the moisture out of your hands. It'll crack and all that kind of stuff, especially in the summertime. Uh, we've got some spreaders we're going to talk about and all kinds of groovy stuff. But first, let's get some filler and wipe it on. And by the way, guys, we're going to shut it down and let you guys ask some questions. I hope there's a bunch of people watching. I hope you've got some good questions, and I hope I know the <laughs> answers. But if I don't know the answers, then the online restoration forums, there's a ton of people, great information, and also the Eastwood Tech Lines. Uh, Eastwood has guys working there that aren't just suits. They're not just people that, that answer the phone. They're really qualified in uh, troubleshooting and guiding you through the products, as well as there are P-sheets or product sheets on the Webernet. 
that you can um, you can download and get all the specific details on application for for your particular repair. Now I was going to have a stir stick handy and I don't, so it's live. So here we are. What we're going to do is use one of these. These are neat because there's five different spreaders in here and there's a bunch of different shapes and depending on the contour and the shape of the piece that you're wanting to fill, you can um, you can use these guys. Here's another tip. If you got a real tight area, you can score it, break it, and create the type of filler applicator that you want. For me, I just want to get a little bit of filler onto my quick sheet. That's going to be way, way plenty. Okay, here's another thing. I like to use these over and over again. I want to clean them off every time that I use it so I, it's ready for me the next time. Pre-painting prep is a really nice product to be able to do that. I'm spraying my paddle with it and since you're going to have paper towels or shop towels around anyways, a little bit of pre sprayed onto the thing and now it's ready the next time I want to use it, it's ready for me to reach for. Catalyst. Let's talk about catalyst. Do not forget the hardener. If you're ever with me having an adult beverage, I'll tell you a story about a friend of mine that didn't use the hardener because <laughs> it's, a, it's a good one. And I'm not throwing stones. I'm not. I promise. I've done it too. Um, don't. It, it's a catalyzed product and it needs, needs a hardener. Now, you saw what I was doing. I'm rolling this. I'm kneading it. K-N-E-A-D. Making sure that it's mixed because it's also resin technology and it's got liquids in it that you don't want to separate. So one stripe across your Bondo daub and you're going to be fine. I'm going to use this guy because I like the shape of it and I just I just reach for that that shape a lot. I, I feel like Bob Ross and I'm making a happy little Bondo pile. The premier filler that I'm using is a great direct to metal. It's a DTM. Get used to that phrase because you're going to need to know the difference. It's a good DTM and it's a nice quality product. So I'm safe to go over top of either galvanized or non-galvanized sheet metal with this guy. And if you ever have any questions about it, you can put premium or any other type of filler over top of epoxy. If you've got a vehicle media blasted, you've epoxied it, you can go as long as it's within a 48 hour window, I believe, maybe, maybe, uh, Bust me on that, guys. Um, you know, we can, uh, maybe Matt can have that tech sheet ready. It's, it seems like it's, it's three or four days that you can apply filler over top of epoxy without, uh, without it being a, a problem. Or then, you know, if you exceed that window, you got to scuff it up again, reapply the epoxy, and apply your filler. Or just scuff it up again and get down to the metal. All right, here's what we're doing. Now, I'm not going for any kind of a contour here. My first initial wiping is just to establish, it's like a primer. It's just to establish kind of a communication between the panel and the filler. So I'm making sure that I've got, I'm not trapping any air pockets or air bubbles. And, and that I'm ensuring that I'm going to have good adhesion between my filler and my panel. Look at the thing flopping around in my hand. I'm not using hardly any pressure at all. Fingertip pressure. Fingertip pressure. I'm trying to ask this stuff to go where I want it to go instead of pushing it around and bullying it into the places that I want it to be. And I want to make the point of the fact that I'm not in a panic here. I've had time to talk to you guys. I've had time to look at my panel. I've had time to clean up my edges, get my stuff off the outside edges, and really focus on the shape that I'm trying to create here without freaking out. There's a tendency to think, oh my gosh, it's going to kick, it's going to kick, it's going to kick. And it is at some point. And my point is that you got time to do it properly. You got time to do it effectively. Now I can actually gauge here. Okay, see now we're starting to kick. We're starting to get a little bit 
a little bit firm. Now we're about like cold cookie dough, and I'm not going to eat it. Okay. And again, <coughs> not a bad idea to put the lid back on your filler using the pre-painting prep. Clean off my spreader while I'm talking to you. I've been introduced to some great techniques by people that I've been blessed and fortunate to work with. One of them I'm about to show you. When I'm doing shaping, rough shaping on filler, getting down to business, I'm using 36 because I want to get there fast. I want to establish my shape and get there fast. Well, I used to wait till it was dry and then go at it. It's a lot of work. It's a lot more work than what I'm about to show you. Basically what you're doing, listen, listen, you hear that? It's smucking. It's not ready yet. So I'm going to bide my time and I'm going to monitor this until I start to see it powder just a little bit. 